Hello friends, welcome to another game here on chess.com. 10 minute games commenting our moves, so maybe you can, you know, enjoy and have a good understanding on chess. So we're growing our uh, account here, this is a speedrun account, okay, so... Uh, we, we want to run this account up to 2,000 rating or more, so that's what we are doing here. So he's playing on Queen's Pawn and uh, we are fighting for the center as well, okay? So uh, now my opponent is thinking if he's going to develop a piece or if he's going to attack the pawn. He went for the London system. That's how this move is called. It's the Accelerated London. Don't uh, be scared about those names. They just don't um, mean too much. Okay, so now I'm fighting for this. Oh, I just lost an opportunity here to do something very wild, but okay. Um, I think that uh, I played too fast here. I think that c6 and I would be threatening to capture uh, and then followed by queen and then bishop, but because this bishop can back no more, but it doesn't, doesn't mind. I think that our position is pretty good right now because those pawns now are going to be targeted. Um, okay, so we have many possibilities. He's obviously going to play like this, which I don't believe is very good. I can even poison this pawn. I, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. But he's got this. I mean, I played this. He's going to play like this and then like this. So let's think for a while. I think it's important to protect my king. So that's my number one concern right now. Protect my king. So he doesn't have those such attacks. This is very odd move. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> I don't get it. So um, I don't get it. I don't think it's a good move. But what is he doing? He's just going wild. I can even sack, you know. I can even sack the knight now. I can even sacrifice my knight now. Knight takes pawn, pawn takes, and then queen take, queen h4 check, and then bishop takes, and we're gonna go wild. That's exactly what we're gonna do. I mean, I'm not even calculating, because this gotta be wrong for him, you know, just, uh, he moved only pawns, and now this is just going to be difficult for him, I think. Okay, we don't want to exchange pieces, right? We don't want to. Unless... This results in bringing more pieces to the game, which is interesting. But we need to calm down now and think. I think this one is a good move because I'm attacking this pawn now. And if he attacks my queen with the knight, then and I'm taken here. So how can he defend it? Okay, queen f1 defended. This pawn is under attack as well. Next move is going to be this. Whoa, he can't play this because of that. Nice, let's bring the pieces. So I should be targeting the center. Should I play f6, e5, or e5 immediately? Maybe knight first. Let's bring the pieces. Let's bring the pieces to the attack. So we sacrificed the piece for two pawns, but we got a strong attack. His pieces are not developed. I can play queen f6 if I want in the future, but here I'm putting a lot of pressure in the position, and it's not easy for him now. Not easy for him. This was a long, uh, long uh, run, long term sacrifice. It's not that we got an immediate compensation, but it's no, you know, it's gonna be so hard for him to play this that um, it's worth it. But also, uh, yeah, it's obvious. I have to find the most energetic moves, and and this is this is the um, the all the risk involved when you sacrifice. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. no. Oh my god, that is insane. Oh my god, that is insane. I, I'm, I'm probably pushing here right now. Yeah, immediately. Yeah, that's what I have to do. I mean, it's not possible. It's not possible. He won't survive with this king on an e3. No peace developed. Now I'm striking the center. Yeah, but now what? I mean, he's not surviving this. It's not possible he will survive. Yeah, he can even push the pawn again. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I will do. Now this, things are getting pretty tense here. Whoa, really? Now I think the game is over. I can even capture, you know, but that, this is like, game is over. And it's very interesting because 
he is a full piece up right now. I'm getting my piece back, but I think I'm better. I think I'm better. Which rook? I will get this one. So now it's really complicated. So it's not possible that he's going to survive with the king in the center and then undeveloped pieces. It's just a good work for him, but he shouldn't have captured the pawn. He should have played something else here. Maybe bishop here, I don't know. Then I'm taking here and there. So yeah, it's not easy. He would have to go back here. But then my pieces are coming. I mean, this is insanely difficult. But yeah, bishop d1 was really more resilient. But now he lost the queen. <laughs> okay, game over. He's going to resign. I think he's going to resign. Pieces are falling one by one now. And we already have an advantage on material. But I, actually, I'm, I'm checkmating him right now. I bring in the rook and he cannot survive for maybe five or six moves. If he can, he will have to deliver all his material. Because look at that. His rooks can't play. That's a bad news for him. His rooks just can't play because he was so concerned grabbing material, grabbing material, moving pawns, grabbing material that he did not develop his pieces. He didn't develop and now it's over. Bring the rook. I don't have to calculate because it's just bringing pieces to the attack. I just don't have to do to calculate. Um, well, I, now, I, now I'm going to calculate a little bit because, yes, it's mating two, right? Not in true, mating four, mating four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, guys, um, that is what happens when you don't develop your pieces, okay? So um, let's do the game review. And uh, this was a quick game, but it was a very interesting one to highlight the problems on not developing the pieces. So I sacrificed a piece there, and uh, it says I made a brilliant move here. Let's see what, what it was. Um, it, and, and it was the sacrifice, it, but it was, it was a brilliant, but it was, just, oh yeah, I do have an advantage here. I made some mistake here, he could go back, but let's see what, what was that. Oh, knight takes spawn was brilliant. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the game, some mistakes for both sides, and uh, let's see what was critical here. So, uh, okay, this knight, this opening is fine. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. I would probably, probably bishop d6 was not the right idea here. You know, those ideas of taking the knight and then coming with the bishop check and, and uh, yeah, this is just crushing. So after after I played it, uh, bishop d6, I saw that uh, I had this, I have seen this before and, uh, and uh, unfortunately I didn't go for this. This is annoying, you know, not that I'm winning, look at that, the evaluation is equal, but this is annoying. White losing the, the right to castle right on the beginning of the game. But okay, this is good as well. But now he made a mistake. His pawn structure is really bad. And uh, knight f6, okay. Computer preferred knight to e7 for some reason, but okay. And now this is really looks like a bad move. We just castle and we are fine here. I don't think it's in an accuracy, but uh, computer says it is in the low depth. Let's increase the depth because I think it's a pretty good, decent move. Yeah, probably it could even be the best move, but okay, not the best anymore. That's why the computer called it an inaccuracy, but okay, he's back. So it's computer stuff, you know, if we live to, well, now it's the best move. So you never know if we leave it on depth 30, 40, maybe it can be the best move. So the computer says it's an inaccuracy. I, I don't think it is. It's not important what computer says. Most important, it makes sense. This move makes sense. We protected our king. There are no more concerns on, on pinning my knight or, you know, checking my king and, and doing something. So it makes complete sense. But now, no, no, I didn't calculate here because it can only be good, you know. It can only be good uh, to sacrifice here because he has no developed pieces. No one, not a single one. And I get two pawns for the piece. So that's... You, you may uh, normally three pawns are, are good for the piece, but I got two pawns and an plus an exposed king plus undeveloped pieces. So that's that's my math. That's why I didn't calculate. That was my process of thinking. Okay, so um, then let's check. So no more castling, two pawns and a strong attack. But the computer says bishop. Oh right, that's that's 
Much better. That's much better. Bishop to e4. That's what I should have played for sure. Yeah, it's much better. But I'm good here. It's balanced. You know, it's interesting to see that um, even with a miss, uh, the position is balanced and it's very hard for him to fight. So, okay, bishop, I keep the bishop, now I'm attacking the pawn, and king e3 was the best move, not, 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 wow, king e3 here is the best move, not easy to find, and it's balanced, you know, g5 is coming, it's gonna go wild. Okay, he made a more natural move, but now bishop e4 again is good, but knight c6 also very good, developing the pieces, and, uh, and then he went, he came with the king, but it's interesting to see that now uh, e5 is a strong move, and it doesn't seem like I can play e5 here, and uh, that's the move I played, and I'm so happy to have played it, because it's not an easy move to see once, since you, you know, this looks like a um, um, place you can't go, but actually we can, for two reasons, uh, number one, he cannot capture with this pawn because otherwise he would be hanging and his king is going to be exposed and, you know, several losses are coming, severe losses are coming. And uh, if he takes with this pawn, then this pawn can march over. And uh, that's what we want to do when the king's in the center. We want to find a pawn rupture. All right. So um, this is a very instructive move. So he has to, to take with that. And, but now my pawn marches. And when I do like this, what can he play here? You see the computer says bishop g4, it doesn't make any sense. So the position is so um, terrible for white right now that uh, the computer says he has to give his piece, my piece, his piece back. So, but let's see, this is more natural. Let's see what to play now. Knight takes e5 is a possibility, but bishop e4 is even stronger. Bishop e4, why? oh, the idea is to um, gain uh, access to f4 if some piece blocks. That's very nice, that's very nice. I don't, I, I sincerely, I don't know what I was going to play here. I don't know if I would find this bishop e4 idea. Probably I would bring the rook or I don't know. I, I wouldn't sacrifice the knight for sure. I wouldn't do it. That's not my, I don't do I would. I would not uh, even consider probably this move, not even consider. But uh, rook from a to d8 most probably was the, the move that, that I was going to make and, you know, play on the long run. I am a piece down, but his king is, his king is so bad there. Uh, g5 is just uh, too wild. I wouldn't probably play it. But bishop e4, maybe it could come to mind. And uh, it's not an impossible move to find. But then uh, queen takes f4. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. And then uh, bishop goes back to g6, and we got some pawns, and those pawns are hanging, and his king's in the center. You know, the game can go on. The game can go on for a long time. Uh, the game can go on. This is just a long-term sacrifice, okay? But as you can see, this is so easy to play as black and so hard to play as white that uh, it definitely shows some compensation here. The game, here we are, we are on a very imaginative and speculative territory, so let's just go back. So d3, and, uh, and then bishop takes, but then it's all over. The rook comes. I could even take, as you can see, I could even take, and, uh, and, uh, and then winning the, the uh, but if he takes with the king, and then the king is exposed, no, I bring the rook, I bring more pieces, but I don't have to, I just can pin it, so much stronger. And now he's trying to escape, but then... All the, uh, everything is falling apart, and yes, I don't have to even calculate here, like I said. But here I calculated a little bit, trying to find a checkmate. I found checkmate in four, but actually there was a checkmate in three moves here. Rook d2, okay, so rook king to c1, then rook takes h2, king b1, queen f1. Whoa, okay, there was a faster checkmate. I'm not uh, sad that I didn't find it because, you know, if you find the checkmate in four, that's fine. But uh, there was in three here. Let's see this one, rook d2, and he cannot go to um, b3 or c3 because of uh, queen b4 would be checkmate. Okay, and not even this because of this checkmate. Okay, so he would have to go here, which is very annoying, but then rook, well, any, any rook move here. Rook e2 works as well, rook e2 is, works as well, but this one is nice, yeah, it, has a, it's a, it has a good looking style to finish. Uh, this is checkmate and this is checkmate, so very nice. So there was a faster checkmate, I'm not sad that I didn't find it. 
Okay, guys, I think that's it for today. This this shows the importance the importance of developing your pieces. Just don't go wild with the pawns. You get so exposed that uh, it's hard to fight from there. Okay, thank you. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you if you enjoyed it, remember to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for your audience, and see you next time.